the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound. Sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her, <coughs> her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad. Knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean, and re the record wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass thrice shod through the Red Sea. This is the night with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Oh, oh, oh wonder of your humble care for us. O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, 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 happy fault that turned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night Dispels darkness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. Oh, oh, oh truly blessed night, 
When things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. On this night, your grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, the gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the light of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may extinguish your candles and leave them upright until the wax dries, and you may be seated. Please stand. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these the last days has sent us his Son is our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you may be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, 
and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky and shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant over all the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth, and all their array, were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called out to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust, on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey. He took with him his son Isaac, and two of his servants as well. And with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, he set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. He then said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac. He put him on top of the wood of the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay a hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by his horns in the thicket. He spied, or excuse me, so he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh, 
Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declare the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands in the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of all nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your people may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. 
The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rebel camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians with their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people, grant us, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. I think our next reader is here. Ron, if you could read the next reading. Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that you knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, as high as my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, 
giving seeds to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my words be that go forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Almighty and ever living God, so hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for the Gloria. Oh, 
let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading from the epistle. From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery of sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourself as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At daybreak on the first day of the week, 
the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember that he said to you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles, but their story seemed like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down, and saw the burial clothes alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. I think the Lord's playing a joke on me. I had some notes in here, someplace, either the Lord or the one of the deacons. <laughs> there we go. Thank God. On a night like tonight, if I didn't have a few notes in front of me, I'd probably go on until midnight. And I'm sure no one wants to be here till midnight. Maybe 11, but not midnight. <laughs> Every year I always uh, read as part of my prayerful preparedness for tonight part of one of the most uh, famous Easter vigil homilies ever given. And that's the homily given by St. John Chrysostom. It's very beautiful and just to begin to set the tone of tonight and the mysteries of the sacraments that we're about to celebrate, just want to read a brief portion of that uh, Easter homily by St. John Chrysostom for you this evening. He says this, Let all pious men and women and all lovers of God rejoice in the splendor of this feast. Let the wise servants blissfully enter into the joy of their Lord. Let those who have borne the burden of Lent now receive their pay. And those who have toiled since the first hour, let them now receive their due reward. Let any who come after the third hour be grateful to join in the feast as well. And those who may have come after the sixth, let them not be afraid of being too late. For the Lord is gracious, and he receives the last even as the first. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Christ is risen and you are abolished. Christ is risen and the demons are cast down. Christ is risen and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen and life is freed. Christ is risen and the tomb is emptied of the dead. For Christ, being risen from the dead, has become the leader and the, the river the reviver of those who had fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It's a beautiful reading that just sets the tone of the first and the last, and it sometimes seems like uh, Lent comes as a long, long journey. That was reflected tonight, uh, actually several hours ago, if we're celebrating the Easter Vigil now, 
Pope Francis celebrated it seven hours ago or so, somewhere around in there, uh, when he celebrated it in Rome. And one of his opening remarks in his homily was this. And it refers to the gospel that we had just heard. He said this on the Easter vigil just a few hours ago in Rome. The journey of these women in the gospel is our journey. The journey of salvation. Those women come on a journey bringing spices, expecting to encounter Jesus and expecting to bury Jesus, but instead they encounter the risen Lord, the empty tomb, the proof of the resurrection. Tonight we have with us many of those who will be uh, joining us through the sacraments, and it's been an awesome journey for each and every one of them, whether they're being baptized tonight, whether they are being just uh, receiving confirmation being confirmed and brought into full communion in the church, which means they were baptized at another time, maybe when they were younger in another denomination. And then those receiving their first Holy Communion for the first time tonight. It's a beautiful journey, but it's not over. No, in fact, it's just beginning. Nor is it over for any of us. We are encouraged to find new hope in Jesus Christ. We're encouraged to continue in faith as these sacraments are celebrated tonight of baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. We are reminded of God's blessing and graces to all of us through these sacraments. How through the death of Jesus, through the passion of Jesus, through the waters of baptism, we die to our old selves. Those who are going to be baptized tonight will literally die to their old self. I love the ancient practice of the baptism. When they were baptized, it was full submersion baptism. They were fully submersed in a pool of holy water. And as the third time that they were dunked down into the water, they were dunked down and they were held under until they were almost literally squirming for air. And as they would come up out of the water, there was a gasp. There was a deep, (gasps) as they came out of the water, breathing the new life. That being held down under the water until it literally felt like it was taking their life away from them. And I promise I'm not going to do that tonight. (laughs) I see a few scared faces in front of me. (laughs) But it was uh, beautifully resembled the meaning of dying to self, dying to our old ways dying to what we left behind because this journey has brought not only those to be baptized, but all of us to a greater faith, to a greater glory in God. Whether we've been Catholic our entire lives or cradle Catholic, or whether we've only been Catholic for a part of our life, the journey that has brought us to tonight is part of God's plan. Part of God's plan for all of us to recognize His redemption in Christ Jesus for all of us. And the mystery of these sacraments is so central to our faith. The mystery of baptism. Now Christ says it is essential for salvation. Essential. Which is a beautiful thing to see that that beauty of the essential mark of baptism on those being baptized tonight as we are reminded after their baptism as we are sprinkled with those freshly blessed baptismal waters of our own baptism. And then in confirmation, as they're sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, each and every one of us is reminded, and in a powerful way through the fragrance of the sacred chrism that the bishop has consecrated just a few days ago, that fragrance will remind us of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the breath of God, right? That's the ancient word for the Holy Spirit uh, was the breath of God, the ruah. Literally, you say the word ruah. You can hear the breath, the life breath, the Spirit come out. And finally, the Holy Eucharist, this most sacred supper, which Christ celebrated with his disciples at that last supper. And for many tonight receiving their first Eucharist will for the first time 
enter more fully into that sacred night. Enter more fully into that great mystery of Christ pouring his body and his blood out for you. Pouring his body and blood out for each and every one of us. It's a powerful moment. Of course, baptism is powerful. Confirmation is powerful. But I see more power sometimes in the receiving of the body and blood of Christ. That sacrament that we continuously receive each and every Sunday which is each and every Sunday is like a little Easter. We celebrate those Paschal mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. To receive him in the Eucharist is the most powerful thing. As I reminded us at the beginning of Lent, the ashes, the palms, all of those things mean nothing compared to the body of Christ. Receiving the body of Christ will be, will be the most important thing that you do every Sunday from now till eternity when you celebrate the Eucharist with Christ in heaven. So these sacraments are so important for all of us to be reminded of their power in our life, for all of us to be reminded of God's grace and God's love for us. So I ask us tonight... Maybe to some this night might, night, see, night might seem like nonsense. We heard in the gospel, some of those who heard the story thought it was nonsense. But this isn't just a story. It's our life. It's Christ's life in us. Not just a story. It's a truth. It's a reality of how God has created us to be in this moment at this time right here and right now. But for an Easter people, which is us, St. Augustine said, we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. For an Easter people, for us who celebrate the fullness of the Catholic and apostolic faith tonight, this story is certainly more than a story. It is life-changing for all of us. So I ask you, how has Christ's own resurrection changed you? How has it made you more an Easter people? And how is encountering the risen Lord Jesus Christ going to lead you on the next leg, the next stage of this journey of faith? At this time, I'll invite the deacon to call forward those who are going to be uh, receiving the sacrament of baptism this evening. Tracy Jo Ayton. Derek Damon Brown, Kelly Louise Brown, Brecken Berlin Brown, David Demas Jr., Madeline Angel Leah Fisher. Christina Nicole Gadke, Ellison Ray Gadke, Ethan J. Gadke, Emily Nicole Gadke, Simon John Gadke. My dear friends, let us pray to Almighty God for all our brothers and sisters who are asking for baptism. He has called them and brought them to this moment. 
May he grant them light and strength to follow Christ with resolute hearts and to profess the faith of the church. May he give them the new life of the Holy Spirit whom we are about to call down upon them. I invite the congregation and those to be baptized to please kneel for the litany of saints.
I invite the new, those to be baptized to come and line up on the side of the sanctuary here as we prepare to bless the new baptismal waters. In baptism, Heavenly Father, we use your gift of water which you have made a rich symbol of grace which you give us in this sacrament. In the very dawn of creation, your Spirit breathes on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end to sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples to go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to the, water, uh, give to the water the grace of your Son, so that in the sacrament of baptism, all who, those who you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin and rise to new birth in innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. And so we ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear catechumens who are about to be baptized, we will now anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So now I ask you, together with those who are about to be baptized, to renew your own baptismal promises by responding, I do, to each of the questions and petitions. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and the prince of darkness? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So now I call forward Tracy, who will be baptized first. Tracy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And 
invite Derek next. Derek, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Kelly. Kelly, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Brecken. Brecken, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. David, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Christina, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mom's going to stay in the tub for Emily. <laughs> Emily, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Simon. Simon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ethan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and Ellison. Ellison, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and welcomed you into the holy, his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed a priest, prophet, and a king, so may you live always as members of his body, sharing eternal life. Amen. We anoint the children with the sacred chrism because the adults will be anointed in just a few moments at their confirmation. And now as they receive their white garments that they will receive as a sign of their Christian dignity. My children, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive the baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. And now sponsors will receive a candle. And as the sponsors receive a candle, I'll have the deacon bring the Easter candle down for them to be able to reach it to light their Easter baptismal candles. baptized receive the light of Christ you have been enlightened, enlightened by Christ walk always as children of that light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts when the Lord comes may you go out to meet him with all the angels and saints in the heavenly kingdom this we ask and we pray through Christ our Lord amen The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith. To the praise of God the Father. Amen.
I invite the newly baptized to blow out their candles. As they follow out, they'll be changing clothes as the rest of us are reminded of our own baptismal promises.
I now ask those who are to be confirmed to come forward with your sponsors when your name is called and join us in the front of the sanctuary. Crystal Dawn Lee. Aaron Nicole Wright. Melinda Fisher. Tyson James Cromie. Joshua Eikhoff. Erica Felix. Of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you, along with your sponsor and in the presence of this community, to profess along with us the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. So please join us in professing the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So I ask you who are about to be received into full communion in the Catholic Church to please repeat after me. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches and proclaims, to be revealed by God. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church and His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us and the faith that you have professed in the presence of His family. And so now I invite those who were baptized to join us back in the front for the rite of confirmation. And if their sponsors would rejoin them. I think we might need a bigger sanctuary. There's quite a few here tonight. First, I'll speak to the newly baptized who have returned. My dear newly baptized, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost 
and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are all to receive tonight, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. And now I address all of you, the congregation of my brothers and sisters and friends. Let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these newly baptized to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. Please pray for them in silence as the elect bow their heads. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you have freed your sons and daughters from sin and given them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Crystal, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With Aaron, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mindy, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Tyson, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joshua, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Erica, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Tracy, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Kelly, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Derek, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. David, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Christina, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <laughs> At this time, I invite you all to welcome our new Catholics in the church. In the radiant splendor of this holy night, we cry out to the Lord whose mighty deeds we have seen in the deliverance of his people through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. For the church, that we may radiate the light and life of Christ each day and confidently live as daughters and sons of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the newly baptized, that they may faithfully follow Jesus and keep the light of Christ burning brightly in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of hearts and relationships, that the risen Lord will open the path to reconciliation and healing amongst families, communities, and co-workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect and appreciation of human life, 
that all may recognize God's gift in each human life and nurture that life each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us at St. Patrick's Church, that Jesus Christ be now and forever the center of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially our loved ones, that the risen Christ may welcome them into the halls of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for tonight's Mass intention, the newly baptized, the new Catholics, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and loving God, you revealed the mystery of your love that we might share your life. Hear the prayers of your people on this holy night of grace and fill us with faith in your love for us and confidence in your power to provide all that we will ever need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the collection and as we prepare the altar. Please join us in singing number 161, Alleluia, Love is Alive, number 161.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exalts in your praises and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as without end we are claimed. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James and John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysologus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, O Lord, we graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously 
graciously accept this oblation of our service. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this gift in every respect. Make it a spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice into his holy and venerable hand, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, the pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing our communion hymn, number 366, Bread of Angels, number 366.
let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maybe just uh, one more congratulations to our new Catholics who survived this long service tonight. And also a beautiful thank you to our wonderful choir who worked so hard to make it beautiful. Bow down for the blessing. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of this Paschal feast come with Christ's help and exalting in his spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father be with you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please join in our closing hymn number 168. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Number 168.